So this is what an art therapy classroom looks like. Um, it's very like interactive and that's why all the tables can move. Basically art therapy at SAIC is taught both in the undergraduate and graduate program. To become an art therapist legally, you do need to get a master's. You will have to go through the graduate program, but students who want to become an art therapist are encouraged to take art therapy in undergrad, as well as students who are not necessarily interested in becoming an art therapist, but want to add in art therapy to their other forms of art, or they themselves want to take kind of like a calm, chill class to learn how to manage stress on their own because those classes are also taught within the art therapy department. Um, the cool thing about the art therapy department undergrad is that the classes are basically split up in a slightly departmental way. So if you're more interested in, for instance, comics, which is what I do, um, I took the graphic medicine, which is a form of art therapy through comics. So I took that class. My roommate who does bookbinding and fibers took the fibers and bookbinding art therapy class. There are also art therapy classes that focus more on writing. There's a bunch of different forms because art therapy in the like workforce can come in many, many different ways. Um, the art therapy classes themselves are a lot of reading, I'll be honest. Um, you're reading a mix of both texts written by artists as well as like doctors and medical practitioners. So we would get kind of a pretty even balance of art therapy from the art perspective of like, we learned about the fact that like stick figures and smiley faces are actually really important in art therapy because everyone can see themselves in a smiley face versus a really highly rendered photo is super specific to somebody. And then we also learned about the like legal side of art therapy and where it comes into medical practitioner, both as a for like for nurses and doctors as well as for patients. So it's kind of an equal amount of that. And then in your graduate time you're working more directly with the like therapeutic side and actually with like doctors and nurses and all of that. Um, another cool thing is that you do have a lot of artists and doctors that come in to talk. We had like a doctor from Rush as well as one of the founders of the graphic medicine movement come in to talk to us about graphic medicine which is really cool. It's great that I got to meet her. She's like the coolest person ever. Um, you'll be making a lot of work um, so we would usually work on at least one comic every single class. You definitely have to keep up a sketchbook in this class because that's a big part of art therapy when you're a practicing art therapist and you want people to keep up kind of a journal sketchbook situation. So you will be doing that. Another interesting thing is that you do get to do a little bit of hands-on field work in this department. So depending on what class you're doing, you'll get more or less, depends on what you're interested in. Um, my class, for instance, got to go to a senior center um, and we got to meet with the art therapist who's working there, who's actually an SAIC grad. She talked to us about what an art therapy uh, practitioner does in like her job. I guess. Um, specifically, she works with elder care as well as memory loss. So we actually got to work with the memory care unit specifically. Um, memory care, if you've never worked with people with memory issues, usually that unit in a uh, care situation is separated from the rest of the group for safety reasons. And so we got to go in there and work with them. We were each assigned to a specific person and we made like a collage with them and then we painted with them. And it was really interesting because we got to see the art therapist who again was an SAIC grad walk around and talk to each one individually. And she would like look over our shoulders and point out specific things in the drawing that we were doing together that was important. Um, so mine, for instance, my the woman I was working with was really interested in Van Gogh and the fact that she was having me paint like Van Gogh was actually really important because it meant that she was like remembering Van Gogh and she could remember these colors that she liked but other things were hazy, which is a really important factor in our therapy because people will sometimes have a stronger memory when it comes to like things that they can touch and hear and like sounds and stuff like that rather than specific dates. It's a really interesting conversation when it comes to elderly care, which is what I'm more interested in when it comes to art therapy. You will also get to talk and understand whether you're more interested in elderly like memory care versus at risk youth versus like whether you want to work specifically with doctors and nurses. That's another thing that you kind of get to explore when you're in the art therapy department. Um, but yeah, I would highly suggest everybody taking a class. There are also classes, like I mentioned, that are more specific to SAIC students, like that are about like how to manage your time and your stress as an artist and like art therapy classes that are really for us, which is great, as well as workshops. Um, so that's what art therapy is like. <laughs> um, and then over here is our art education department. 
main difference between art education slash art teaching and art therapy is that art therapy undergraduate, you're still getting a BFA in studio because you do need that graduate department. Art education, if you are focusing in art education undergraduate, you are taking a different degree program than the rest of us. Um, you can get certified to be an art teacher undergrad. So that's the biggest difference. You can also take art education as a graduate student as well. We do offer for grads. Um, but if you would like to do an undergrad, that's also great. It's a two year program. So what happens is for your first two years at SAIC until the end of your sophomore year, you're kind of just like everybody else. Um, you're pursuing the normal BFA. You would be taking all of the classes that we are. So freshman year, you have your art history classes and your studios and all of that. But what you want to do is make sure that you're getting quite a lot of studios ahead of time. Um, because in art education, you are expected to have an understanding of like a super broad range of mediums, everything from like painting and drawing and sculpture to like digital work as well. Because when you're an art teacher, you need to kind of know everything. You don't need to be as specialized as maybe some of the other students at SCIC. And then at the end of your sophomore year, you basically apply into the art education department. Um, when you're in the art education department for your last two years, a lot of it is off campus work. Um, so basically what happens is you will end up getting paired off with another teacher at a Chicago school. Generally, it is a public high school in Chicago. You do get to choose which one a little bit. So like if you live in Ravenswood, we're not going to pair you off with one in Avondale because that's quite far away from you. So generally, if you live off campus, we will try and accommodate where you live just because you'll be working there a lot. It's much easier. Um, and basically, you are working with a art teacher at one of these Chicago schools. Generally, it is also an SAIC grad at one of these schools. And you are going to be like a teaching assistant. So you'll start off as a teaching assistant, which is like you're helping with the class. You're maybe like making sure that the kids are using scissors correctly, that kind of thing. Um, you're observing. And then towards more your senior year, and especially the end of your senior year, it's really you teaching classes kind of on your own. You'll have a little bit of supervision but we're trying to kind of build up your confidence as a teacher. Um, and then all of these hours that you are working will be sent to the Board of Education in Illinois because what happens is after you finish your Bachelor in Fine Art with a focus in art education or teaching, that is when you are going to take this like exam to then certify you to teach in the state of Illinois. Um, and you need all of these hours, just like in driving, you need all of your hours to then apply for the actual test. Um, so that's kind of how art education works. A lot of your classes in like the actual campus classrooms, other than taking like as many studios as possible and having a good understanding of art history as well as English, you're also gonna be teaching, taking art education classes, which is a mix of like education classes in the same way that any teacher would take, how to keep students' attention, um, the proper way to talk about certain subjects, as well as specifically how to teach art and like the ways that that comes into a classroom with interactive work and all of that. So that's kind of what the art education department at SAIC is. The biggest thing to remember is that you can get your art education certificate undergraduate. So yeah, that's it. <laughs> awesome, thank you so much, Hannah. Mm -hmm. um, so that concludes our tour for the art education and art therapy department. Thank you so much for joining us. If you have any questions at all about the art education or art therapy departments or about the school in general, you can always get in touch with us. You can call our office at 312-629-6100. You can email our, our admissions office at ugadmis at saac.edu. And then of course, you can always find more information about the school, about the art therapy and art education departments at saac.edu. So thank you again so much for joining us and have a wonderful day.